Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the AWS tools for PowerShell to create an Amazon S3 bucket inside of your AWS account. And then we're going to create an HTML file and configure the S3 bucket for static website hosting. We're going to accomplish all of this using the AWS tools for PowerShell, but we'll just use the AWS Management Console to confirm that our configuration is working correctly. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Visual Studio Code, where I'm running the AWS tools for PowerShell. The first thing I'm going to do is call the set default AWS region command, and this is going to set the target region endpoint that I want to call commands against. So in this example, I'm just going to choose the US East 2 region, which is also known as the Ohio region. Once I've created the default AWS region configuration in my shell, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new S3 bucket. To do this, we use the new S3 bucket command. Now I need to come up with a name for the S3 bucket, so I'll assign that to a variable called bucket name. I'm just going to use the new GUID command in PowerShell to grab a new GUID and randomly generate the name for the new S3 bucket. So I'll hit F3 to run that command and store the new GUID inside of a variable called bucket name. Once I've done that, I'll come back to the new S3 bucket command down here on line 4 and specify the bucket name parameter. I'll go ahead and pass in the variable called bucket name and hit F8 to run that command. So now we've created a new S3 bucket with this random GUID for its name. So the next thing that we need to do is to create an HTML file inside of the S3 bucket. That'll be our static HTML page. To create this object, I'll use the write S3 object command, which is the PowerShell command that allows us to upload or create objects inside of our bucket. I'll go ahead and specify the bucket name parameter and then add the bucket name variable that contains the GUID of our bucket name. The next thing I'll do is specify a key for the HTML file, so we'll just call it trevor.html for now. And then I can specify a file from the local file system that I want to upload, or I can specify an in-memory stream, or I can use the content parameter to actually just specify an inline string containing the text that'll get uploaded to that key. So I'll go ahead and use PowerShell's here string syntax, which allows us to create a multi-line string. So I'll just specify the HTML in line instead of creating a separate file, just for simplicity's sake. So we open the here string with the at sign and single or double quote, either one is up to you. I just tend to prefer single quotes in PowerShell. And then you close it with a new line with a single quote followed by an at sign. And anything that you put inside of there, as long as it doesn't contain the single quote and at sign, will be considered as part of the string. So we'll go ahead and specify the HTML head, and then put a title of hello YouTube. And then we'll create the body tag, and we'll just create a simple div, and say hello Trevor and company. Great, so that's our HTML file. We'll go ahead and just select this code here, and we'll hit the F8 key to run that, and that will go ahead and create the HTML file inside of our S3 bucket. Let's switch back over to the AWS Management Console and just look at our configuration so far. So I'll hit the refresh button here, and as you can see, I have this brand new bucket that I just created today, January 11th, and if we open that up, you'll see that we have a single file, or object in this case, called trevor.html. If we come over to the properties page on the S3 bucket, and you look at the static website hosting, you can see that it's currently disabled. If we click on that option and try to navigate to the endpoint, you'll see that we get a 404 error saying that the specified bucket does not have a website configuration. So how do we enable website hosting for this S3 bucket? Let's go ahead and switch back over to our AWS Management Console. We'll go ahead and just cancel out of this for now and come back to the main page. We're going to use the AWS tools for PowerShell to configure the S3 bucket for website hosting. So I'll switch back over to Visual Studio Code. So there's a particular command that you'll want to pay attention to in the AWS tools for PowerShell called write 
S3 bucket website. Now, when you configure the website for the S3 bucket, you'll want to make sure that you specify the bucket name that we're operating on. In this case, we're going to specify our bucket name variable that contains the name of our bucket, which is the GUID. And then you want to make sure that you specify the website configuration underscore index document suffix. And this is going to be the default document that's navigated to when you go to the root of the web server. So we'll just set that to trevor.html, which is the S3 object that we created inside of our bucket. So if I hit the F8 key to run this particular line, you'll see that we've successfully ran that command in the console below. But if we switch back and try to navigate to that website under properties, you can see that bucket hosting is now switched on. And if we click on this link, you'll see that we still get this access denied message, which is different than the error that we got before, which was a 404 indicating that server hosting wasn't enabled. Now we're getting a different error message, which is simply saying access denied. So what we need to do is create an S3 bucket policy that gives us permission to access the objects inside of this bucket. So I'll switch over to what's called the AWS policy generator. And this is a simple web-based tool that allows us to generate resource-based policies for different resources such as SQS queues, S3 buckets, VPC endpoints, and other types of resources that support resource-level permissions. So in this case, we need to create an allow permission. And we're going to give all identities access in this case because we're accessing this S3 object anonymously. Next, we're going to choose the service, which obviously in this case is going to be the S3 service. And then for actions, there's lots of different API actions that we can perform within the S3 service. But in this case, we only want to enable the get object permission. So I'll go ahead and click on get object here. And then we also need to specify the Amazon resource name of the resources that this policy is going to allow access to. So I'm going to choose the ARN of ARN colon AWS, which is public AWS, followed by the service, which is S3. And then we can skip the region and account ID and simply specify the bucket name followed by the key name as shown in this example right here. So I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio Code and we'll just grab the bucket name variable. I'll go ahead and just copy and paste the bucket name from Visual Studio Code here. And then I'll add a slash star dot HTML. So that's going to restrict this policy to only allow us to access HTML objects inside of our bucket. You can also add conditional statements. So in this case, I'm going to add an IP address conditional statement. And then I'll add the source IP. And I'll say that if anything comes from the 73.0.0.0 slash 8 CIDR block, then we can access these S3 objects. So I'll go ahead and add that policy and generate it. And we can now simply copy and paste this policy thanks to the policy generator tool. If we switch back over to our Visual Studio Code editor, there's another command that you'll want to look at called write s3 bucket policy. So the write s3 bucket policy command is simply going to apply a JSON-based resource policy to our s3 bucket. And we have the policy parameter here. So of course, we specified our bucket name parameter with our bucket name variable. And then the policy, again, we will specify a here string in PowerShell and we'll simply paste the JSON that was generated by the AWS Policy Generator tool. So if we simply select this command from top to bottom and hit the F8 key to run that, you'll see that we've successfully configured the S3 bucket policy. Let's switch back over to the AWS Management Console and look at the permissions. So I'll come up to the S3 root, refresh the console, and then we'll drill into the permissions. If we click on the bucket policy button, you'll see that our policy shows up here properly. So now if we go over to properties, click on static website hosting, and then click on the website URL, 
you can see that we've navigated successfully to our default document, which is trevor.html, and it contains the div element that says hello Trevor and company, and sure enough it says hello YouTube as the title of the web page. So that's everything I had to share with you today regarding configuring S3 static website hosting using the AWS tools for PowerShell. Thanks for watching, and feel free to leave a thumbs up and a comment for what you'd like to see in future videos. Cheers!